During his first year in power, Hitler reduced unemployment by over one-third. By 1939, unemployment was basically at 0% and the gross national income was skyrocketing. How did they do this? Was Hitler an economic genius? The Great Depression of 1929 triggered a banking and financial crisis in Germany. The subsequent economic collapse and political instability led to the destruction of the Weimar Republic. In 1933, fresh in power, Hitler had to solve two particular issues. 6 million unemployed Germans and a costly dependence on foreign goods. To fulfill his promise of work and bread, Hitler hoped to transform Germany into an autarky. This meant a closed economy that did not engage in international trade and, therefore, an economically independent and self-sufficient nation. Hitler intended to do this through three specific strategies. Public works, rearmament, and expansion through war. Let's take a closer look. Unemployment was tackled by setting up various organizations and public work programs to get Germany back to work. Some of these included the construction of hospitals, schools, housing, dams, power plants, and public buildings such as the 1936 Olympic Stadium. These generated jobs for Germans and drastically lowered unemployment. For example, the building of the Autobahn alone created work for 80,000 German men. The Nazis were also able to lower unemployment and control their workers by promoting national services and programs. For example, the RAD, or National Labor Service, let's say, persuaded all men between 18 and 25 to spend six months in nature, planting trees, digging, and draining ditches. The new DAF, or German Labor Front, replaced the annoying trade union, controlling and protecting workers' rights. Organizations like the KDF, or Strength Through Joy, provided workers with leisure activities and supplied the affordable KDF wagon to all German workers. This encouraged hard work as it provided Germans with a healthy relationship with their jobs. The four-year plan of 1936, led by Hermann Göring, saw Hitler's first time directly intervening with the economy. The plan aimed to accelerate the rearmament of the German military and worked towards creating a self-sufficient German economy. And it was remarkably successful. What are we doing? Why aren't we just copying Nazi Germany? They have 0% unemployment. Why can't we just do this everywhere else around the world? Like, the gross national product of Germany skyrocketed it. Look how happy these workers are, of course. They're all protected and they all have new cars. They're all going on vacation. Wait, why are they dressed like that? Yeah, the, the problem is, it's not true at all. Many historians like Timothy W. Mason suggested that the miraculous recovery of the labor market under Hitler was more appearance than reality. The German propaganda machine proved successful once again. The new organizations and programs didn't really benefit the workers that much. It benefited the party. The RAD literally forced young men into forests to work. Unionization was now lost under the Nazi-controlled DAF and no private citizen ever received a KDF wagon. The four-year plan of 1936, with its primary focus on rearmament, did contribute to a decline in unemployment as thousands were conscripted into the army. Numerous factories were established and it eventually had a positive impact on German economy. However, this apparent economic growth was often a result of statistical manipulation, which was a propaganda tactic used by the Nazis. In reality, the German economic growth figures were exaggerated and invisible employment was a method used to manipulate statistics. Through exclusions and arrests, the Nazis hit the levels of unemployment. Those who the Nazis considered undesirable or inferior, such as women and Jews, were excluded from the unemployment figures, which reduced the percentage significantly. This practice allowed the Nazis to distort these numbers, creating the false impression of reduced unemployment rates while systematically oppressing and exploiting vulnerable populations. With war on the horizon, Hitler understood that Germany needed to achieve full autarky. However, in a globalized world, achieving autarky was virtually impossible. They needed Romanian oil, Swedish steel, Ukrainian wheat, and Indonesian rubber. Propaganda efforts were made to promote German goods, but ultimately, Germany did not possess the resources to achieve this. The outbreak of war in Germany brought hope and had a minimal effect on the German people as early victories brought an influx of raw materials and luxuries from annexed countries, bolstering supplies and boosting the economy. This war also created millions of jobs for German citizens. For example, by 1939, the Wehrmacht had reached a total of 4,220,000 soldiers, and by 1943, it reached a peak of 9,480,000 soldiers. This meant that these jobs had to be replaced back home. 
further lowering the unemployment rate. However, as the war efforts continued, the civilian population and its industries began to experience problems. Rationing was implemented in 1939, and the developments of strategic bombardment from 1942 to 1945 brought death and destruction to German civilians, who endured bombing raids that tragically claimed around 3.5 million lives. These raids by British and American bombers resulted in further food shortages and the widespread destruction of essential infrastructure. By the end of the war, everyone was working, and all factories ceased civilian goods production, focusing solely on items required for the war. By 1944, almost all work was being done abroad by 7 million foreign slave workers. In the next part of the series, I will talk about the life of different social groups inside of Nazi Germany. Thanks for watching.